بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هي از دكتور رامي ربيع فيسيولوجي ديبارتمنت منصورة يونيفرستي ويل توك اباوت ذا نيرف امبلس فيرست وي شود نو وات ذا مينينج اوف ريستينج من برين بوتنشال The potential difference between outside and inside of the nerve fiber during rest. Uh, we have an electric difference between outside and inside of the membrane. It measures about negative 70 millivolt for neurons and negative 90 for skeletal and cardiac muscle. The action potential or the term of action potential it's formed of rapid depolarization followed by rapid repolarization. Repolarization means returning of the membrane potential to resting state. Uh, what are the function of the action potential? In the nerve is to conduct neuronal signal between nerves and the nervous system and the muscle to initiate muscle contraction. This is an action potential. So the action potential travel from one side to another side. A action potential are equally similar, similar in character, but they differ in duration. Note here in the cardiac muscle we have long duration, uh, more than skeletal muscle and motor neurons. Uh, we should know the ion channel involved in action potential, starting by the voltage gated or fast sodium channel. A fast sodium channel are responsible for the depolarization phase or the upstroke or the uphill of the action potential or the upstroke. This is called rapid depolarization phase. But the fast sodium channel has two gates and have three states. We have two gates, an outer gate called M gate and inner gate called H gate. The M gate called activation gate and H gate called inactivation gate. Uh, we have three states, either closed state during rest or during resting potential. In the closed state, the M gate is closed and H gate is opened. Uh, during depolarization or activation of sodium channel occurring by the M gate, opening of the M gate called activation or transition of the sodium channel into the activated state or open state. So now we have M and H gate both opened and sodium current flow occur. During repolarization, sodium channel become inactivated through the H gate. H gate is closed and M gate is still opened, but now the channel is inactivated. Uh, this three state is very important. Uh, once sodium channel become inactivated, it can't activate it again. It must go or transit it to the closed state again. So, sodium channel must go from inactivated state to the closed state or resting state before it can open again. This is important in what's called refractory period. Or it's a period no response can occur in the action potential. Or a second stimulus cannot give response due to inactivation of the sodium channel. So again we have three states in the closed state as we say we have M gate closed and H gate is opened. In the open state or activated state this state occurred during depolarization we have both gates and opened and sodium current flow occur. The last state is inactivated state which occurs through the H gate through the H gate. But what's the importance? Why we need three state, not either open and closed? Once the cell repolarized, the fast sodium channel transition back to the closed state and ready to reopen, causing another action potential. Uh, hyperkalemia and excitability. 
Hyperkalemia means increase potassium level in the body. Uh, but the hyperkalemia has different effect on neuron excitability. Acute hyperkalemia causes potassium entry, which depolarizes the neuron and the cell closer to the threshold. So this means increase in excitability. But chronic hyperkalemia decreases the excitability. How does this occur? Patient with chronic hyperkalemia, hyperkalemia keeps the cell depolarized. Over time, fast sodium channel turn into inactivated state. And as we say, when the sodium channel become inactivated, it can't be activated again until it go to the closed state. So chronic hyperkalemia keeps the cell depolarized and sodium channel inactivated and unable to transition back to the closed state. This is called locking of sodium channel. Now the sodium channel is locked, is inactivated state. So this reduces the number of fast sodium channel available to open, resulting in reduced neuronal excitability seen with chronic hyperkalemia. Uh, we have a clinical application for this sodium channel. If we block the sodium channel, depolarization may stop. Uh, a famous toxin called tetrodotoxin, it's a sodium channel blocker that inhibit the firing of the action potential in urine by binding to the voltage-gated sodium channel in the nerve cell and blocking passage of sodium ion. Tetrodotoxin present in the buffer fish. Uh, about the voltage-gated potassium channel, voltage-gated potassium is responsible for repolarization phase. But note that potassium channel is much slower than the sodium channel. So potassium outflux leads to cell repolarization, but the potassium channel is very slow in opening and slow in closure. So when membrane return to the resting state, Potassium efflux continue leading to hyperpolarization state that corrected again by the sodium potassium pump. So in short, what is the ionic basis of action potential? Depolarization is caused by sodium influx, but we have two stages, slow stage and rapid stage. The slow stage occur until we reaching the threshold level. At the threshold level, here the most of fast sodium channel or voltage activated sodium channel are opened and rapid depolarization occur with overshoot to positive 35. When the membrane overshoot, here sodium channel become inactivated and potassium channel or potassium current increase now we have repolarization. Uh, due to continue of potassium efflux, we have a hyperpolarization state. So repolarization caused by outflux of potassium, but very important, the cause of repolarization, we have two causes: outflux of potassium and inactivation of the sodium channel. Hyperpolarization, the potassium channel remain open for some time, result in continue or continuous potassium efflux. Uh, what is the meaning of threshold? Threshold is the degree of electricity that we can generate an action potential. If we reach the threshold, action potential can be generated. If we have graded stimulus, weak stimulus, this is blue one for example, give a weak response which is sub-threshold response. If we increase the stimulus gradually until we reach the threshold, if we have threshold stimulus, now you may have an action potential or a nerve impulse. This nerve impulse or action potential can not be submitted, but sub-threshold response can be submitted. The action potential once occurred, it can regenerate itself and go along the axon. Look here, we have the threshold or sub-threshold response 
depending on the amount of sodium entry weak stimulus cause slow or weak sodium influx when we increase the stimulus more sodium influx occur and more response until we reach the threshold now an action potential can be generated what the meaning of refractory period we have two phases during the action potential absolute refractory period and relative refractory period absolute refractory period it coincides with the depolarization phase and the most of the repolarization phase absolute means no response at all whatever the stimulus even we get a strong stimulus the nerve cannot respond again or cannot give another action potential during this absolute period we can explain that during depolarization most of the voltage gated sodium channel is already opened okay and in the part of repolarization we have inactivation of the sodium channel as we say when the sodium channel inactivated it can't be activated again it must go to the resting state first this is absolute refractory period but the late part of repolarization and hyperpolarization is named relative refractory period if we get a strong stimulus it can give response but we need a strong stimulus to overcome potassium current the last part is the conduction or propagation of the action potential once action potential generated at the start of the axon at this part it transmitted or conducted along the axon to reach another neuron or to reach the muscle in case of motor neuron how this occur propagation of action potential may be from one nerve or one neuron to another neuron we have two types of conduction either continuous conduction or saltatory conduction continuous conduction occur in unmyelinated nerve fiber but the saltatory conduction in myelinated nerve fibers uh, look to this figure here is myelinated nerve fiber here are the myelin sheaths but as you know myelin sheaths is interrupted not a continuous sheath interrupted at the nodes of Ranvier we have nodes of Ranvier here but this one is unmyelinated what happened in case of unmyelinated the action potential travel along the whole axon all part of the axon but in case of unmyelinated or myelinated fiber the action potential travel only or generated only at the nodes of Rambier. Now we have a myelin sheath. This myelin sheath acts as electric insulator that prevent current leakage and limit the electric movement or current movement only at the nodes of Rambier. So what you expect which more faster that one or saltatory conduction or continuous conduction sure it's saltatory conduction uh, how actually this occur if we give a stimulus here is a resting membrane potential for example here is a resting potential okay if we give a stimulus first the area become depolarized now we have a depolarized area and the adjacent polarized area this will create a current this will create a current flow we have a depolarized area and adjacent polarized area will create a current so the depolarization transmitted in the adjacent part and sodium entry occur leading to regeneration of the action potential that travel along the whole axon uh, here is the continuous conduction action potential started at the axon hillock and travel along the axon or regenerated and along the axon but in case of unmyelinated or myelinated fiber 
action potential generated at the node from where only at this part so we name it saltatory conduction or jumping conduction what are the factors influencing conduction velocity it depends on the cell diameter and the myelination the greater the cell diameter the greater the conduction velocity and the myelination the myelinated fibers are more or faster or faster than unmyelinated fiber what the value of myelin cheese myelin provide greater electric resistance across the cell membrane so it reduces the current leak through the membrane but this myelination is interrupted at the node of Rambier where sodium channel cluster present thus the action potential appears from one node to another node with minimal decrease and greater speed we have different types of nerve fiber for example we have sensory fibers and motor fibers sensory fiber like a alpha or a beta or a delta and lastly c fiber uh, look here to the conduction velocity and the diameter the largest one is the a alpha fiber with the largest diameter and the highest speed uh, look here to the c fiber and the smallest diameter and the slowest speed okay each type of fiber present in certain area for example the a alpha present in muscle spindle and a beta present a Golgi tendon organ and skin mechanoreceptor. The C fiber present in the pain receptor or slow pain receptor and thermal receptor and some mechanoreceptor. We have an important clinical application called multiple sclerosis and Guillain-Barré syndrome. What happened here? Here is a normal myelin cheese. What happened if this myelin cheese is lost or demyelinated by the effect of antibodies like this? We have an autoantibody that destruct the myelin cheese or cause demyelination. This will lead to slowing of the nerve impulse, even block of the nerve impulse and sensory loss or motor disorder. So multiple sclerosis and glamperies is an application of demyelination and demyelinating disease. Demyelination means loss of myelin results in current leakage across the membrane and the magnitude of current reaching of fast sodium channel is unable to cause threshold depolarization resulting in conduction block. But the multiple sclerosis mainly present in the central nervous system and Glamperi syndrome on peripheral neurons. And thank you.